The 1946 film The Killers, based on Ernest Hemingway's short story, starts with two hitmen arriving in a small town to kill a former boxer. The story then unfolds in flashbacks as an insurance investigator tries to find out why. This movie takes you on a journey through a man's life and his fate, leading to many unexpected turns that are funny, shocking, and sometimes sad. Have you ever watched a movie and a certain scene just stayed with you? In The Killers, there's a moment that might just do that. It's when the hitman confront the boxer and he accepts his fate without running. It's powerful and leaves you thinking about life and choices. Movies become classics for many reasons, but The Killers stands out because of its storytelling and the way it captures the essence of fate and consequence. It's a film that shows how past choices catch up with you and it does so with a gripping tale. Now, we're curious about your connection with The Killers. What's your most memorable moment or experience with this film? Your stories and memories are important to us and we'd love to hear them in the comments below. Let's share and keep the legacy of this classic alive. The movie The Killers from 1946 starts with a bang. Two hitmen come to a small town to finish a job, but their target, a former boxer named Ole Anderson, doesn't run or fight back. Instead, he waits calmly for his fate. This strange reaction leads an insurance investigator to dig deeper. The film shows the dark side of life and how choices can lead to unexpected ends. It was a big deal back then because it showed a more serious and real side of crime, not just the glamorous part. The story is based on a short tale by a famous writer, Ernest Hemingway, and it was one of the first movies to use a storytelling trick called a flashback, where the past is shown to explain the present. This movie is important because it helps shape how stories are told in films and is still talked about today for its style and the way it tells a complex tale in a simple way. In his early 30s, Burt Lancaster transitioned from his acrobatic performances and military service to the silver screen, making his debut in this notable film. Alongside him, William Conrad also marked a milestone, earning his first screen credit. Fans of the genre can revisit the experience through an old radio adaptation included in a dedicated film noir DVD collection. This film stands as a significant point in both actors' careers, marking Lancaster's cinematic entrance and Conrad's credit inception. Ava Gardner, celebrated for her striking features, left a lasting impression on and off the screen. Her legacy extends beyond her film roles, with a museum in Smithfield, North Carolina, dedicated to her life and work where fans can connect with her story. She rests at Sunset Memorial Park, her memory preserved in the hearts of many. William Conrad, another notable figure, owned a piece of cinema history, a lead Falcon prop from the Maltese Falcon, which fetched a record-breaking sum at auction. This prop, along with its resin counterparts, holds significant value, much like the fabled treasure in the film itself. These items, steeped in Hollywood lore, continue to fascinate collectors and film enthusiasts alike. In a twist of casting fate, Burt Lancaster, not initially considered for the lead, took on the role after Warner Brothers declined to release Wayne Morris. The search for the right actor saw names like Van Heflin, John Hall, Sonny Tufts, and Edmund O'Brien in the mix, with O'Brien ultimately securing the part of the insurance investigator. Lancaster's career had its share of financial ups and downs, notably with his company Hecht Hill Lancaster. Despite facing financial challenges in the late 1950s, a settlement was reached with United Artists in 1965, amounting to nearly 921,000 equivalent to over 5 million today. This agreement included a potential role in the film cartoon, which Lancaster did not pursue, leading to Charlton Heston taking the part. The film's significance is recognized by its inclusion in the Criterion Collection, a testament to its enduring appeal and importance in cinematic history. The film holds a special place for its writer, as the opening sequence stays true to his short story from 1927, using the original dialogue. This faithfulness to the source material extends only so far, with the remainder of the film exploring unanswered questions about a character known as the Swede. The writer himself acknowledged the story's depth, noting it had significant omissions. In the film, Burt Lancaster's character is often referred to as Anderson, yet the correct spelling from the story is Anderson. Lancaster's career was marked by his roles in several critically acclaimed films, eight of which were nominated for the Best Picture Oscar. His filmography includes notable titles such as From Here to Eternity, which won the award, among others like The Rose Tattoo and Judgment at Nuremberg.
in the landscape of American theater and cinema, Sam Levine's achievements stand out. His performance in The Devil's Advocate earned him a Tony Award nomination for Best Actor in 1961. Despite his lack of singing ability, which is unusual for a musical comedy lead, Levine's portrayal of Nathan Detroit in Guys and Dolls was memorable. His vocal range was so limited that his solo sumi was composed within a single octave and he lip-synced during group performances. The film adaptation of a well-known short story received praise from its author, who, expecting the worst, prepared to endure the private screening with alcohol, but found no need for it, indicating his satisfaction with the movie. This anecdote reflects the film's quality and the author's approval. Burt Lancaster's dedication to his craft saw him pursuing the lead role in Hector Babemko's adaptation of Kiss of the Spider Woman for four years. His commitment was cut short by health issues, leading to his replacement by William Hurt, who won an Oscar for the role. Producer Mark Hellinger acquired the screen rights to a story for $36,750, leading to his first independent production with a screenplay by Richard Brooks and an uncredited John Huston. Lancaster also showed interest in Patton and The Godfather, but circumstances led to others taking these roles, both of whom won Oscars. Despite these setbacks, Lancaster's influence in the film industry remained significant. Burt Lancaster stepped onto the big screen in a significant role shortly after his Broadway debut, marking the beginning of his film career. His transition from stage to cinema was marked by a performance that showcased his developing talent. Edmund O'Brien, his co-star, had a distinguished career with appearances in several films that were nominated for the Academy's highest honor, including one that secured the award. Their collaboration in this film was later revisited in a radio adaptation, which aired a year after the film's release, bringing their on-screen characters to life once again through the airwaves. The radio show provided audiences with a new way to experience the story, with the original actors adding depth and familiarity to the broadcast. In the mid-1950s, Andrei Tarkovsky, a film student at the time, paid homage to the classic story with his own short film adaptation, which runs for 19 minutes. This short film is now included in a prestigious DVD collection. Meanwhile, Burt Lancaster, known for his work in cinema, was set to star alongside Audrey Hepburn in a film scheduled to start production in April 1981. However, the project never came to fruition. In a notable interaction, Lancaster presented Ringo Starr of the Beatles with two of his personal revolvers during the band's famed Hollywood visit in August 1964. In the mid-20th century, a film was released that would later be recognized for its significance in cinema history. Burt Lancaster, known for his physical prowess, demonstrated this at the age of 53 by climbing a 150-foot cliff during the filming of The Professionals in Nevada's Valley of Fire. Charles McGraw, another actor from the same era, left a mark with his performances in four films now preserved in the National Film Registry for their cultural and historical importance, including this 1946 classic. Meanwhile, producer Mark Hellinger made a pivotal decision to switch directors due to financial constraints, opting for Robert Siodmak over Don Siegel, who was then considered to have a limited reputation. This choice proved to be ironic as Siegel would later direct the 1964 version of the film. These events reflect the dynamic nature of the film industry, where artistic choices and financial considerations often intersect, shaping the movies that become part of our cultural fabric.